So, so basically, there's all these videos. Have you, have you seen any of these videos on YouTube that are like how to um, uh, drill a hole in your new iPhone 7 for the headphone? Okay, so they it started as a joke. It was like, you know, how to drill, and it was like, but they made a very well-produced video that's gone viral about, you know, how to drill a hole in your new, and it like, you know, it really, it looked very real. Although, who, I mean, and all of the comments below are like, I drilled a hole in my eye. And it's still not working. Like, there's real comments of people who had drilled a hole in their eye. <laughs> um, that's wrong. It's really. But, um, you know, I've, I'm finding, uh, I just wanted to kind of experiment because the idea being is Steve Jobs created, he was Picasso and he created art. That's why the thing happens, not because of any other reason. It was because of his aura in the art that he created. And his aura was so magnetic, and, and the thing, you know, he obviously had some skills and talents, but his energy was so magnetic that when he created the piece of art that was the fir first iPhone and some of the other art that he created, it was just, you know, a revolution. But now he's not around anymore. And so I'm very fascinated by what's happening as these iterations kind of move past his kind of auric frequency and his art, what, if it still feels the way that it felt before. Because the six was kind of like, eh. Because he was a, a part of making the six. He was a part of kind of, you know, the, the, it was like right at the tail end of his life. So there was still some of his kind of energy and, and his kind of auric frequency or his art in the, the thing. But now we're, we're these iterations are moving past what was... And I say this all the time because it's like you get like, you know, the ju you know, Amanda, my friend who has moon juice, it's like, you know, anybody can open a juice shop. There's no barrier to entry. Anybody can open a juice shop, you know, and, and many, many people do. I don't know why. It's like really not a good idea. But uh, many people open a juice shop and, you know, there's, there's, and why does it happen for, why has it happened for Amanda? She just opened that little juice shop on Rose Avenue. Um, and then, you know, it's become a huge kind of phenomenon and, and it's not because of the juice because anybody can open a juice shop. It's because of the creativity and the frequency of the, the, the kind of the creative art of the person who's doing it. This is why, you know, there's a book I've been talking a lot about that's called Blue Water. Um, that's about a kind of a they are not calling it this way, that this, you know, in this way, but it's about kind of the Aquarian way of looking, what I would call an Aquarian way of looking at how to be creative and how to, you know, give your gifts in the world. And their whole point is you just keep, you keep giving your gifts and then you keep swimming out away from the people who are still in the non-reality of competitiveness and, um, you know, copying and stealing ideas and whatever, all the kind of weird stuff that we live in Hollywood, so all sorts of weird stuff happens like this. Um, you know, just this kind of competitive, jealous, compulsively strange kind of behavior that people uh, do because they think that they uh, don't have enough creativity to do something beautiful themselves. And as I've been saying forever now, creativity is the commodity of this age. So you can have as much money. We were, you know, in a town where people have so many resources and so much beauty and so much, you know, all the whatever. And it's really one of the most miserable places in the world. True or not true? <laughs> I mean, we're not miserable, but there's a lot of misery in this town. And either there's more resources than, you know, hardly, there's hardly any other places on the earth that have more resources in terms of material and, you know, all the beautiful people and this, that, and other thing. And then the misery is so, so, so high. So we know that that doesn't do it. And so the creative act is the wealthiest thing you can do in a day for yourself. It's the richest thing you can do in a day for yourself. And I'm very, you know, I was just having a little cry. I had to um, stop my binge watching of the get down to come here and teach this class. 
<laughs> it's paused, right? I might try to like watch a little bit while you guys are doing yoga. <laughs> you know, there's some weird people who do stuff like that. Like we know some, we know some weird people that like you know we, we, they're leading a two and a half hour meditation like during one of the teacher, and they're like up here like reading a magazine. I'm like, what's okay, okay, um, but so I was just, I was, who's anybody watching it? Okay, good. I'm glad that you guys don't. No technology, no TV in here. We're very pure. We're like yogis. Okay, um, it's really worth watching, in my opinion. I mean, it gets a little fantastic because Baz Luhrmann is the um, whatever. He's not the director. Do you know that, Julian? He created it, but he's not directing the episodes. They have different directors, yeah. Um, it's called the the Get Down, and um, I was having a little cry, cry because it was a very beautiful scene. Because um, basically, the whole thing is about the creation of a new genre of music and the the way that a new a whole kind of trailblazing of a of a. I mean, m most of the music that we kind of know now uh, wouldn't exist without what happened in this time that this the show is about, um, which is the kind of birth of East Coast hip hop, the DJ scene, and the, the shift from kind of the disco era into a whole nother era of music. And it was all birthed out of, you know, these riots in, uh, um, in the Bronx at the, this, the blackout of 1977 in New York City, the riots basically allowed for a bunch of disenfranchised youth to steal turntables and it went from one one guy grandmaster flash to you know many 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 kids do djing in the bronx and you know grandmaster flash talks and when they interviewed him about it, he's a real guy when they interviewed him about it, he said, you know, who would have known out of like basically a city burning, a whole new genre of joy and creativity and the way that we know like a party, like parties weren't, I mean, you know, just for the millennials in here, like there were no, you know, that wasn't happening before this. <laughs> I mean, but that's like, you know, for people who, it's like a whole, I mean, that wasn't happening. There was DJs, and um, a friend of mine was a DJ in, in London in the 70s, and the way they DJed, they were DJing, DJing like dance hall music, and the way they DJed is they would have a record, and everybody would be like, you know, going, and then it would stop, and it was like a dramatic thing. It would stop, the music would stop, and they'd pull the record up. It wasn't this two turntable thing. They'd pull the record up, the music would stop, the whole audience would stop, and then it would be like this, like kind of slam the record down, and then the music would start again. But that was, that was DJing, and that was, you know, um, but this whole kind of two turntable, so a whole birth of an artistic, and, and it, what's really interesting, I'll ruin the show, show for you so you don't have to watch it. Um, no, what's really interesting is they kind of layer in how the visual arts of street art and where Basquiat and like all this kind of, the, the whole, a whole movement of aesthetics and music and all, all came from, you know, basically a burning city. So, um, it's a powerful statement about art and about creativity. So I think it's really worth taking a look at because these are the commodities of this age where people are so mentally bankrupt uh, with all of the kind of alienation that technology, as much as we're more connected than we ever have been, we're so alienated. And so um, they actually are doing, they're like starting to kind of um, diagnose people with loneliness disorders. Have you guys heard about this? It's becoming now like it's it's such uh, loneliness is becoming such a thing because people are so you know a uh, lack of touch and lack of connection and and we haven't even gotten to the virtual reality time so it's really we're we're just on so loneliness is actually becoming there's a lot a lot of people writing about this right now it's actually becoming something that um, they're you know using as a diagnostic it hasn't made its way into the DSM yet but it's uh, it's becoming an epidemic the loneliness so. This kind of creativity thing, this is one of the riches that um, we, well, it's one of the things we came here to do. It's really the only thing we came here to do, um, as opposed to, you know, the complaining and the, um, you know, 
trespassing against each other and, you know, our greed and our suffering and all that kind of stuff. We're really obsessed with that, but that's actually not what we came here for. Um, so we're just going to work today because it's, a, it's kind of a, a very subtle day. It's a lunar cycle day, the fourth day of the moon. Um, and so it's a, it's a very healing day. And there, Yogi Bhajan talked about something that nobody talked about. No one has talked about it at all, even in like some of the um, Vedic scriptures and stuff. They talked about the 11th day of the moon and the new moon and the full moon, but they never this fourth day of the moon is a very mysterious teaching um, and I want to explore it further when we go into the healing school at the end of the month but he said that on this day there's a very particular secretion of the glandular system that can and it's and that's why we like to kind of eat lightly I ate some cheesecake for breakfast but um, it has steve it has stevia in it what okay um, <laughs> It's, it's low-fat cream cheese with stevia in it. Um, so you eat green foods, you know, whatever. Um, drink a lot. You know, you try to hydrate as much as possible. And you kind of give your, your system an a opportunity to kind of get this reset. And he said that if you practice this every month, so it's new moon is day one and then day two, day three, day four. So new moon is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I get that question a lot. So new moon is day one. You count from there, and then the fourth day, that day is a day where you can actually kind of really heal a lot of fatigue in the system. And a, a, many of our adult reasons why we're not creativity, or why we're not creative, well, we're not creativity either, but why, why we're not creative is that we're fatigued with all of our kind of adult, whatever, misery. So this is a day where you actually can kind of reset a lot of your glandular system. And this is the thing about the glands. You actually think and behave differently when the glandular system is secreting in a healthy way. It changes your personality. It changes the way that you kind of, your reality. And that's something Yogi Bhajan, fundamental Yogi Bhajan teaching is that when the glands are secreting properly, your blood chemistry, your whole kind of way that you uh, view the world is totally different. And so it changes your reality. So this is a, phys a physiological way that we can start to kind of change our perception of reality. So I like to take this day when we have the opportunity and teach a, a meditation that he taught specifically for the fourth day of the moon. It's good for the, you know, post-apocalyptic pothead syndrome. Um, but also, you know, we're at a time where everyone, as I was saying the other day, I was going off on like, now the marijuana pills is as strong as a Percocet. It's like, we're supposed to be happy about that. So everyone can just be fucked up all the time. You know, it's like, I'm in pain. Everybody's in pain. But, you know, in the West, we don't know how, we don't have any kind of techniques to deal with the pain. And Yogi Bhajan, a lot of the stuff he gave, he would say, you know, if you hold your arm up for a period of time, your body, it actually gives your body the, the Tylenol or the, the um, ibuprofen effect. You're start, the body starts to create its own kind of painkiller. Now... You have to go through the whatever it takes to get there. Um, but that, you know, he would say that often, that you're actually creating, and, and some, some of us have had this experience where you're in, you know, Korea and you're doing something heinous, and then all of a sudden you get this kind of burst of like a bliss experience. It's totally natural. You haven't taken anything, but your body is starting to respond to the stressor in a way where it's creating a, you I know... I, I did too. <laughs> it just said I thought so. <laughs> I'm telling you, these things are, this is artificial intelligence right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a weird world out there, but we're just going to do our best to be more human today. That's the, that's the Yogi Bhajan gift, is that you get an opportunity to be more human. So we'll do this meditation, and you can just see, like, it's an age of experience. If you were a pothead, or you still, you know, if you get, like, if you were a pothead, you know, like five minutes ago, <laughs> but you decided to quit and come to yoga, you'll, you'll have an experience, and... Um, you know, one thing to note is that Yogi Bhajan said something about marijuana that um, is very interesting, which is that he said it's actually one of the most detrimental drugs because it pulls fat from the gray matter of the brain that you can't replace.
And that's what creates part of the potheadness. Um, so in a culture where, you know, marijuana is becoming, it's like everyone smokes it, everyone and their dad and their brother and their son and everyone's, you know, doing the marijuana um, as like a medical or non-medical thing, it's, you know, it's good to know that we actually have some uh, ways to heal that because those of us who have been down that road know that it's a, um, as this guy said that I met on Kauai, you know, a while back, if you keep on asking Mother Marijuana the same question, it's going to give you the same answer. <laughs> I said, well said. That is exactly true. <laughs> I'm like, where are you from, brother? Um, he was he was like very uh, holy. And I said, where are you from? And I, I kept on asking him because I knew he was like, you know, like I knew he was dead. He was on Kauai, but I knew he had some good roots. And finally I got from him that he's from Long Beach City. Um, I'm like, I knew you were a local. Uh, but that's, you know, so we, we want to ask, you know, some different questions to some different things. So we'll ask.